This is the third video on Edexcel uh, Additional Chemistry Topic 2, um, Ionic Compounds and Analysis. And in this video, we're going to be talking about solubility, or does this salt dissolve or not? Now, this first section is a bit of a pain because you simply need to um, go away, um, write what we're going to go throughout and remember it. And you must do that. Um, sometimes an exam will be lucky and they will give you um, whether these salts dissolve or not, but um, sometimes you will just be asked, does this salt dissolve, or which of these is an insoluble salt? Um, so it really, really pays to spend tw uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes um, learning these, because then you're going to get marks on it, okay? You're going to be kicking yourselves if you don't learn these and you don't get these marks, okay? So there's two types of ionic compounds or salts when it comes to solubility. Um, first off, there are those, those which always dissolve, Okay, and these ones are nice and easy to remember. They are always soluble in water. Okay, um, easy way to remember these is to remember the the uh, mnemonic SNAP, which I've written far too small. Okay, so if you remember SNAP, you're going to get these right. Okay, so what SNAP refers to is any sodium salt. Okay, will always dissolve in water. Any Ammonium salt, so for example, ammonium nitrate will dissolve in water. Any potassium salt will also always dissolve in water. Now, these are our, um, our metals, um, or our, our cation, sorry, sodium, potassium, ammonium. Um, there is also an anion or a negative ion, which is all nitrates, also dissolve. Okay, so sodium nitrate will dissolve in water, sodium chloride will dissolve in water, sodium phosphate will dissolve in water, any sodium salt will dissolve, any nitrate will dissolve, ammoniums and uh, potassium salts will all dissolve. Okay, so remember SNAP, and you have got that in the bank. Okay, the harder ones are the ones that sometimes dissolve. Okay, so there are general rules here, but there are exceptions to them. Okay, so these ones are a lot harder to remember. Okay, so I'm going to divide these up into um, two sections. Those which are generally soluble, okay, or dissolve in water, and those which are generally insoluble, or those that generally don't dissolve in water. Okay, so I'm gonna represent these as a table. Um, you really do need to learn these. Okay, so if you remember the snap ones always apply, it does make these ones a bit easier as well. So the first type of um, salt that we need to know about are chloride salts. Now most chlorides are soluble. Okay, so sodium chloride will definitely dissolve, potassium chloride will definitely dissolve. Um, lithium chloride will dissolve, most chlorides do dissolve. However, there are two examples which are insoluble or do not dissolve in water. They are lead chloride and silver chloride. So they are our odd ones out here. Lead chloride, silver chloride do not dissolve in water. Okay, second ones that we need to know about are sulfates. Okay, now as um, for the chlorides, most sulfates do dissolve in water. Okay, exceptions to the rule. Once again, lead sulfate. Okay, lead is an exception. Okay, so I always remember, um, just because I, again I've seen it a few times, that lead salts tend not to dissolve sulfate. Okay. However, here there are a couple of um, other examples as well. Barium sulfate is insoluble. It does not dissolve. Okay, and this is actually a really important one which we're going to talk about at the end of this video. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a square on that. I'll come back to why in a, in a, um, in a while. The last one you need to talk about, calcium sulfate does not dissolve in water. Okay, so in that case, there's three exceptions to the rule. Okay, 
there are two examples we need to know about of salts which are generally insolu insoluble. Okay, so most carbonates and most hydroxide salts do not dissolve in water. Okay, so calcium carbonate, for example, does not dissolve in water. Now, the exceptions to these um, to this rule, um, you don't actually need to learn them any differently um, to what we had before, because the exceptions just come from our snap rule here. Okay, so if you remember this snap rule first, it makes it a bit easier. Okay, so sodium carbonate will dissolve in water because it is in the always dissolve list. Sodium hydroxide will dissolve in water. Ammonium hydroxide and carbonate will dissolve. Potassium carbonate and hydroxide will dissolve. So that does make it easier to remember, okay? And it just gives us one, two, three, four, five exceptions to learn. So please write this out, okay? Please learn it, and it will hopefully get you at least a couple of marks on the exam. Okay, the next thing we are going to talk about and discuss is the idea of precipitation, okay, and precipitation reactions. Precipitation. Now, what a precipitate is, um, it is a chemical that is, a, um, sorry, yep, yeah, it is a solid that forms when you mix two solutions together. So let's actually um, look at what that means. Okay, we're going to use our table again. Okay, but imagine that you have got two test tubes. both filled with a solution okay, of salt dissolved in water. So for example, we could have, um, let's say we have got sodium chloride. Okay, let's say we've got sodium chloride and let's say we've got silver nitrate. Okay, now sodium chloride will be, um, um, will be dissolved. Sodium chloride will be dissolved in the water. We said that all nitrate salt, um, salts dissolve in water too. So let's say here we've got silver nitrate. Okay. What we are going to do. Okay. Is mix these together. Okay. And when we do that, we are going to form... Um, Sorry, we are going to form sodium nitrate, which does dissolve, but we are also going to form silver chloride. Okay, if we look back to our list, silver chloride is one of our insoluble salts, it does not dissolve. We are going to get a solid, okay, or yeah, we're gonna get a solid that is formed when we do this reaction. Okay, we call this solid a precipitate. Precipitate of silver chloride. Okay, on an exam, there is an absolute gift of a question that might ask you how you form a, um, a pure dry sample of a solid from the reaction of two solutions. Okay, it sounds quite complicated and technical, but it's actually dead easy to get yourself four marks on this. Okay, and it looks like this. The first step you need to do is mix your solutions together. So step one is mix, okay, and that forms or, or produces our precipitate, okay. To get this solid out of, um, to get the solid out of uh, the solution, we need to filter, okay. So we would simply set up a filter funnel, like so, with some filter paper in it, okay. We would pour our solution in. Okay, and we will collect our precipitate in our filter paper. Okay, so step two in our answer is filter. In order to get a pure sample, we need to wash off any impurities, any of the chemicals are still on here. So we are going to rinse through. Okay, we're gonna rinse through with a bit of water. This is supposed to be a water bottle. That's gone horribly wrong, Never mind water. Okay, so distilled or pure water, 
Um, once we've filtered it, we are going to um, wash it with uh, water. So mix, filter, wash. And our final step, here we should now have a pure solid, but it's um, still going to have water on it. Our final step is to simply dry our solid off. Okay, so you can simply leave it out on a Petri dish or you can put it in an oven. Okay, but we need to dry this off. Okay, so the fourth step is dry. If you get asked this question, how do you form an, um, how do you form a pure dry sample um, of an insoluble salt from two solutions? It's going to be three marks. You can literally write down mix, filter, wash, dry, and that is going to get you four um, It's going to get you four marks on that question. Okay, but you must be able to recognise and identify the question that's been asked to get those marks. Okay, the last thing we need to know in this um, section is about the salt I mentioned earlier which is called barium sulfate, okay? So this is an insoluble salt. It does not dissolve in water, and it has a very special use in medicine. Okay, so this is barium sulfate. Okay, and actually barium sulfate is used, um, um, used in x-rays, and it is given to patients in the form of a drink, okay, or a barium meal, you call it. And what it does is it passes through the um, passes through the body. Um, it doesn't dissolve um, into uh, the blood. It doesn't pass through any barriers. It simply passes through the digestive system, okay. And so you will have barium sulfate that is located at various points in your digestive system. Now, if you X-ray this patient, okay, barium sulfate. Barium sulfate absorbs or is opaque to X-rays. Okay, so similar to bone, you see um, you see a very strong white area here where X-rays have not passed through. Okay, therefore it can be used to identify things like tumours in the digestive system or other um, problems with the patient's digestive system. Okay, so that's the first reason it's used, it is opaque to x-rays. The second reason, because it is insoluble, because it does not dissolve, um, it does not enter the blood. So it is insoluble in water, so does not enter the blood. Okay, which is really, really good, because if it did, it would kill you. Barium salts are generally toxic. However, because it does not dissolve in water, it can't get in your blood, so it won't cause you any damage. It will simply pass straight through your digestive system and out through your 